Welcome back to Bash Bros and episode 64 of the Notorious Pro Wrestling, the TEW Let's Play series where we find out what exactly would happen if Conor McGregor started his own wrestling promotion. It's the Made in Europe pay-per-view. <laughs> um, last time you guys were here, uh, we had our best show to date out of the entire game, a 68 Pipping previous such 67s like Fear No Man and I Your Bollocks. Uh, it was an awesome show. I did spam Conor McGregor twice, which probably helped a lot. Uh, but also supported by a hell of a pay per view or a hell of a main event with Lethal and Grisham versus the Grizzled Young Vets. Awesome to see. No real news other than Steve Kern. He, I don't know who it is, has passed away. Uh. He ran a school. Um, he trained many wrestlers like Mike Awesome, Dennis Knight, Joe Clapp, trained DDP, trained Dustin Rhodes, and Tracy Smith. Okay. Uh, incorporated in the WWE's developmental territory, NXT. Okay. So he used to work, he kind of worked for WWE for a bit. Okay. He passed away. Other than that, we have literally no use to talk about. It's kind of weird. There's been, like, other than that weird wave of retirements that happened two episodes ago, no news to discuss. Let's take a look at the match card and all of the storylines leading into the matches. Many, 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 many moons ago, the Birds of Praise. Rich Swan was injured. A torn bicep uh, when facing the Light Coast Gym. Uh, but he has since returned and saved his partner, uh, Jody Fleish, from Light Coast Gym and from Filthy Generation. Uh, they've taken care of Filthy Generation, laying them out backstage, but now their sights are set on Kid Lycos. And finally, after months and months and months, can the Birds of Prey finally get revenge? when they take on Lyco's Gym in a no DQ tag match tonight. Ozzy Open have been on a mission to try and capture the tag titles. Many things have gotten in their way though. Former tag champions, former best friends, injuries, but they were able to overcome all of those and finally get their title shot, but then but then Dynasty recruited Natalia and, and she became yet another thing Aussie Open will have to overcome before they can gain the tag titles. Two weeks ago they were able to get a pinfall win over the champs in a, in a six man tag and thus allowed them to pick the title opportunity and they picked a ladder match. So tonight it will be Aussie Open versus Dynasty for the NPW tag titles in a ladder match. Chris Hero had an alright outing in the P12 tournament, but once it was all said and done, there was a couple of things he really wanted to get sorted. One of them being getting revenge on Easton Reese for Easton turning on his former mentor and Chris's friend Doug Williams. But Easton has made mates. Uh, his pursuit for the gold has led him to join Grizzled Young Vets and their similar objective of trying to capture the tag gold. These three proved too much for Chris Hero, but he has recruited Jay Lethal and Jonathan Grisham to help him. Things have not been smooth sailing though with Hero and Lethal as they have established a wee bit of a rivalry after their draw in the P12. Can they put this rivalry aside so that they can overcome Easton Reese and the Grizzled Young Bets? We will find out tonight. Tennille Dashwood became the number one contender for the Women's Championship after defeating Session Moth and Debbie Keitel. 
and she's been getting under the skin of Tessa Blanchard by constantly interfering in her matches and also poking fun at Zia Brookside, someone who used to be quite friendly with Tenniel. While taunting came to blows last week when, whenever Tenniel successfully defended her number one contendership and was then laid out by Tessa with her cast. And not only will these two face off, how will the wild card Crazy Mary Dobson fare into this, who has been become increasingly unhinged in her pursuit to capture the Women's Championship uh, in honour of her injured friend, Mad Marley Quinn. And in our main event, the winner of the P12 Ace Dawson takes on Pentagon. Both have had a big storylines coming into this match. Pentagon finally breaking free of the master and Ace Austin turning on his former friend Carlos Romo. Penta sees a little bit of Jake the Snake in Ace Austin and his manipulative ways and he promises to vanquish Ace and retain the title. But Ace has been on a hell of a hot streak, a clean sweep during the P12 and overcoming his former best friend in the final. Can Pentagon hope to retain against this massive wave of momentum? That is the card for tonight, plus we will have a surprise entrant in the Women's Eliminator Tournament. So, nothing left to do but book it. Okay, and we are back coming at you from uh, the Hell Club, as it was called. Uh, Club from Hell in uh, Germany. It is Notorious Pro Wrestling's Made in Europe. So yeah, so this is kind of like Braveheart where every year we'll go to uh, somewhere in Europe. Germany, France, Italy, all those good places. Um, yeah, so this match, uh, or this card, right. Um, I don't know how I feel about it. I think the Women's Eliminator match is going to suck. Um, I think Aussie Open vs Dynasty could be good. I think Penta vs Ace Dawson will be good. Oh, I think we'll have the matches. I think we're going to be most disappointed. Probably Birds of Prey vs Likewise Gym and the Women's Eliminator Tournament match. That's that's my thinking. But we'll see. But we will see. Right, let's start the show. So, backstage promo. Uh, Dynasty. They say, they were good before, but now with Natalia, they are invincible. Uh, Davy Boy has good chemistry with Natalia, we've seen that, and Natalia helped both guys join up, which is good, so it came to a 55, which is a good promo. And in a backstage, or, and in a pre-show match, Crazy Murray Dobson defeated Gia Adams in 12-48, uh, with a split like a moonsault. Uh, Murray Dobson had a 56, Gia had a 30, which is good, uh, 49 altogether. Right, into the main show then. In a good match, Birds of Prey defeated Lycos Jim in 1530 when Rich Swan pinned Kid Lycos with the Tornado Spin Kick. Uh, Rich Swan had a 58, Jody had a 44, uh, Kid Lycos had a 51, uh, or sorry, Junior had a 51 and Senior had a 57. 55 overall, which is oh, which is good. That's good. Uh, Jody was obviously the weak link in that, but everyone else really pulled their weight, which is nice to see. Next up, uh, Conor McGregor comes out and uh, introduces the mystery entrant into the Women Eliminator Tournament, and it is Diana Perazzo. Uh, Diana debuted her virtuosa gimmick, which got poor, <laughs> um, but it was Conor doing most of the talking, so he got an 83. Next, so in this match, and about that decent reaction from the crowd, but subpar wrestling, Diana defeated Amy in 1452 with a Fujiwara armbar. Uh, Amy had a 42 and Deanna had a 29. Ah, <laughs> oh, Deanna, what are you doing? 40 all, 40 matches is okay. Just on the cusp of being bad. That's disappointing. Um, yeah, so Deanna is probably not going to stick. Unless she kind of pulls out a couple better matches, she's not going to be sticking around after this tournament. Next up... Backstage promo with Hero, Lethal and Grisham and Hero and Lethal say look regardless of this rivalry they have going on Let's put it to the side tonight and kick some ass and It looks like they're all good to go for their big match 58 rated segment And the match itself and about to have fantastic heat and great wrestling Easton Reese and the Grizzly Defense defeated Hero, Lethal and Grisham in 1438 
when Reese pinned Hero with a powerbomb after Jay Lethal wiped out Chris Hero by accident. Uh, Reese had a 59. That is the best Reese performance yet. Clearly, the, this like match suited him because he's like mixed in with everyone else. Um, Gibson 60, James 60, Hero 61, Christian 68. God damn, dude. Uh, and Lethal is 64. Um, 65 overall, which is awesome. Really good from everyone. Even Reese pulled out a good match. Best he's probably done. Uh, so yeah, so during this match, what would probably happen is. Lethal would go for the lethal injection, and then, as he's doing as we handstand a bit, Reese would pull Hero into the way, and he would get cuttered instead, leading to him taking the fall. And building that tension between the two. Next up, before their match, Tessa gets a special entrance. She can like come out with a cape, and then behind the cape, oh my god, look, her cast is gone. It's been removed. Um, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I was just I had to try and get the cast off her at some point, so why not give her a wee bit of a special entrance with an okay rating, so 58. And the match itself, and about that have fantastic heat and great wrestling, Tessa Blanchard defeated Tennille Dash with 1939 uh, by submission with the figure four. Tessa, that's the, sorry, that's defense number five for Tessa. 56 from Tennille, 58 from Tessa, 56 overall, which is okay. Um, these guys are definitely capable of better, but it was a heel heel dynamic. Uh, next up in a superb match, Dynasty defeated Ozzy Open in a ladder match uh, in 1745 when Joe retrieved the item with help from Natalia, making this defense number five for Dynasty. Kyle had a 61, Mark had a 63, 58 from Davy, and a 57 from Joe. So Ozzy Open are actually starting to surpass. Dynasty, which is pretty cool. I do think Aussie Open will win the titles in the end. I think maybe in a month month or two's time, they could be the next champions. Uh, 63, which is great. Awesome to see. So the finish of this match would be, say, Kyle Fletcher about to, you know, get the the ladder, or get the, the titles, and then Natalia would come in and then push him off the ladder, and have, you know, push him to the outside of the ring where Mark's there to kind of catch him, but also take... take takes both of them out so Dynasty can get the belts. Um, and then that also like that big bump can kind of write Dynasty off, or that big bump can write Aussie Open off for a month. Uh, so Dynasty are going to have a mini feud now with Birds of Prey, and then Aussie Open can come back for the big blow-off match. Backstage then, Jen interviews Ace and says uh, he is going to do to Penta what he did to Carlos, which is Indram. Uh, 62, uh, Ace is no slouch on the mic. And in the main event, in an exceptional match, Pentagon defeated Ace Austin in 23-27 with a top rope styles clash. Uh, defense number 10 for Penta. Uh, Ace got a 62. Great from Ace. Great from Penta with a 64. Awesome. So during this match, uh, Carlos Romo is involved. Uh, he... You know, so Ref goes down. Ace goes to shouts to Will, you know, bring me my cane. Uh, as Will goes over to the timekeeper area to get the cane, Carlos emerges from the crowd, lowers his hood, he has a cool new haircut. Uh, it's very short and with blue. He's like, Will's like, oh, hey dog, good to see you again. No, no, no feeling bad about what happened. And he attacks. Uh, Will hobs at ringside. Um, and then, well, Ace is distracted by this pentagon, then hits him with the Hit some of the package pal driver and then on then top rope styles clash or whatever, and then that's how he gets the win. 67. I got them. <laughs> Our last two pay per views have been 60 fucking seven. Come on. Um, no, that's still very, very good. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, everyone pulled their weight. Dion is a bit of a disappointment, but it's still not terrible. Definitely not terrible. So, no real news then coming out of the pay-per-view so yes to say next time you guys will be back it will be the fallout show uh for made in europe and we will be back touring in the uk if you enjoyed this episode leave a like and do subscribe to the channel for this and many many more great shows uh if you have any ideas for tag teams storyline suggestions feuds leave them in the comments and i will try and book them we have one coming up soon uh which is going to be Grado's descent into madness as he scrambles to try to find a new client. 
Uh, so yes, that will be very, very interesting. But yes, with all that being said, I will see you next time on Bash Bros. <laughs>